So, my name's Quinan, and I'm a bookaholic. Mom, mom, I said bookaholic. Anyways, I talk a lot, sometimes about fictional characters. So, yeah, enjoy? Good morning, good morning. We have a very exciting video today, but first let's make a cup of tea because things are about to get steamy. I winked. Hi friends, I'm Quinan, and today we are going to be talking about A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. A Court of Silver Flames is the fourth installment in Sarah J Maas's A Court of Thorns and Roses series. If you don't know what it's about, I can't even give you a synopsis without spoiling the series for you. So please come back when you finished it, otherwise we're just going to hop right into it. Why did I do that? Otherwise, we're just going to get right into it. Before we start, some things that I want to say. In this video, I'm going to be making references to Sarah J Maas's Throne of Glass series, so there will be a little warning symbol in the corner down below before I talk about that, so if you haven't finished that series, I would just skip over like five or ten seconds and then you should be good. Also, the second note is the epilogue or the extra scene that I read was from Asriel's point of view, so I will be discussing that. So again, there will be a warning symbol down below. That being said, I have my notes right here. I'm making zero promises that this video will be coherent because it won't be, but I'm so excited to talk about this book. If I could say one thing about this book, it's that I'm so glad the Throne of Glass series has already ended and nothing there can be destroyed. Disclaimer, I love Sarah J Maas. I have nearly all of her books. I love her so much and her writing and her world building or Maybe not on this one. And I will continue to read all the books that she puts out. I really do love Sarah and this is nothing against her whatsoever. Let's kick it off with our two main characters, Nesta and Cassian. Coming into this novel, I absolutely hated Nesta for reasons that we'll talk about in a little bit, but I loved Cassian. And I have to say, coming out of the novel, I think Nesta had character building. I think she had a redemption. I think she had an arc. I think Cassian was the dumbest character ever and I think I think his character was honestly destroyed for me. I reread Akamath shortly after reading A Court of Solar Flames and I just I can't see Cassian in the same light again. He's in this book he's the embodiment of brain empty just horny and I hated that because that's not how he was portrayed in other books. Yes he made a lot of jokes in other books but he was still really intelligent and that's not to say that he wasn't in this book i just feel like the character conflicts that he had didn't really match with the conflicts back in akamath back in akawar and so because of that i just i i couldn't like him also he doesn't follow law and orders anymore he he doesn't reese tells him to do something and he absolutely goes and does the opposite for nesta nesta i hated coming into this book i thought she was entitled she was pissy for no reason and she just took everyone for granted, and that really, really annoyed me. Coming out of the book, though, we see her go through the character arc. We see a lot of guilt. And the thing that I love seeing the most from Nesta is her talking about her relationship with Feyre, how she was really upset about the fact that Feyre went into the woods, and Feyre did all of this for them while she sat around and did nothing. I didn't realize that Elaine and Nesta were both older than Feyre. I thought that Nesta was the older sister, and Elaine was the youngest. And so... To find out that they're both older than Feyre, that makes me hate them both a little bit more. But I love seeing that Nesta addressed that, and that was something that ate away at her. Versus Elaine, who in this book annoyed me the most out of the Archeron sisters. So let's jump to Elaine for a second, because this video is going to be every which way. But Elaine, the reason why she bothers me so much is, like I said, she's an older sister. She didn't do anything to take care of Feyre. She's the gentle gardener type. But she has no personality. What is Elaine doing? We get this fight between her and Nesta, which I guess is supposed to be symbolic because Elaine's now choosing Feyre and Nesta's left all alone. But what right, really, what right does Elaine have to act all high and mighty compared to Nesta? Yes, she overcame her darkness and Nesta hasn't got, quite gotten there yet, but it just really rubbed me in the wrong way when Elaine was acting all superior and like she had authority over Nesta, which she doesn't in age or in action. She never really apologized for making Feyre do everything for them. And so she was just my least favorite character this time. To be fair, I didn't really quite like her in other books, so I can't say she was someone who was destroyed, um, because that title belongs to the inner circle. More. Where was she in this book? I don't know. I don't know where she was. She showed up for about two pages. She was absolutely horrible to Nesta, which, understandable considering how Nesta is so rude to everyone else, but the thing is, more threatens to put her into Hewn City or the Court of Nightmares, which makes absolutely no sense because that's where more suffered 
so much, and so I just don't think that she would think that dumping Nesta there was a really good idea. And it was really strange how that was the character that she portrayed. We very rarely get to see more in a good light, which is so contrary to her personality in general. And she was just someone who, in my opinion, was absolutely wrecked in this book. Her character did not match her character from Akamath. I cite Akamath because I think that was the best book in the series, but it just nothing matched and I, I mean, I just, that's all I can say about that. So then that leads us to Farah and Reese. I have a lot of things to say about Farah and Reese. They binded their lives together. That's right. They're going to die together, no matter what. Let's just compare really quickly with another Sarah J Mass couple. Let's look at Aelin and Rowan. Aelin knows she's going to die, and so she has Lysandra pretend to be her. She has army sent. She has a whole plan for the future. And that's because she loves Rowan. Now Reese, he loves Feyre. He binds his life to hers, even though he's supposed to be High Lord. He's High Lady too. So now, now, you're ridding the Night Court of both. You're ridding of both their leaders all in one sweep. That just makes no sense to me. I'm pretty sure that this was added in as a show of good faith that Feyre and Reese are so happily married. They're just the epitome of love, which they've been in the YA world for a really long time. A lot of people love Feyre and Reese. But true love isn't always doing everything together. It's also not always agreeing with each other, which is another issue that I had. It seems like every decision that they come to, they're always the same and no one can fight them on it. We see this multiple times when Cassian or Azrael brings up some conflict and Reese is like, Feyre's word is law, she's high lady, which is great. Yeah, she's high lady, but you're also high lord. You've been alive for 500 years. Your brothers have been alive for 500 years. So when they say something, it's probably kind of important and maybe you should take it into consideration. How much spicier would this story have been if we got in Reese and Feyre to disagree? Maybe about an order given to Cassian or Azrael, maybe about something else. I don't know. The biggest disagreement here is Nesta and Feyre gets her way with that. Another thing about Feyre and Reese is their pregnancy. I'm really happy for them, but at the same time, I'm a little confused because they did say in Akamath that they would have thousands of years together and suddenly we're completely flipping on that and now she's pregnant. Not only is she pregnant, she has a life-threatening pregnancy. I didn't like this trope. Feyre isn't the main character. I didn't like Nesta and I didn't want to read a book from her point of view, but if we're already in her point of view, then I don't need to be jumping back into Feyre and Reese's lives. I mean, yes, they're very important, but it just, it was, it took up too much of the story. So continuing on with the inner circle or the destruction of said circle, let's move on to Azrael. Azrael has always been my favorite character. I love him so much. And his character was really entertaining to read um, in this book from Cassian's point of view because they are very close. We get some really nice humor from Az. The only thing that I will say is that epilogue, <sighs> he just becomes Cassian. His personality, it just, it becomes Cassian. Sarah J Mass maybe just has an alpha male complex and it, all the Illyrian brothers, they're just kind of the same now. And I really, really hope that Azriel's character does not get destroyed, but it seems like he's on the road there. I feel like just the way that he talks about Elaine in that, um, in that extra chapter, I just, I feel it. I feel, I feel the downhill trend, but so far from Az, we haven't had enough that I can say that he's been absolutely wrecked. And then finally, there's Amran who lost her powers in Akawar. She sticks around and she's with the inner circle. Um, she found her happiness with Varian. She just doesn't have any of the bite that she used to have. And that was a really quick rundown of the inner circle. I, mm, I'm so disappointed by this. They were my favorite, like, YA group, squad, family, whatever you want to call it, and just to see them like this, it was, it was, it was a lot to see them like this. But this entire book is completely character driven, and so not liking the core group of characters anymore, that significantly reduced my enjoyment of the book. Now I've written a bullet point of list of things that I want to touch on, and they're in no particular order, so I'm sorry for the chaos that this was going to be. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that mates are supposed to be rare. Not roar, like all the Illyrian males seem to do, but rare. As in, not every single Archeron sister should have a mate. I hated the fact that Nesta and Cassian were mates. We knew it coming into the book, like, there, there was no alternative. They were going to be mates, but I just, I find it really hard to imagine that out of the thousands and thousands of high fae that there are, Cassian's mate was someone who was once human, right? So chances were that they were never gonna meet. And then they do meet, but it's also his brother's sister. 
seems a little bit iffy to me. I would have loved if they weren't mates, if one of them had a mate in the past. I just wanted to know about their past lovers. I didn't like the fact that we're, we get to hear about Reese and Feyre. Yay, they're mated. I love their relationship, so I have no qualms with that one. And then Nesta and Cassian. And now Asriel going after Elaine, but Elaine is mated to Lucian. It just, it seems really unrealistic. I think it would have been much more realistic in the 500 year span that one of them was alive, they would have found a mate, something would have happened to her. They mentioned a past lover for Cassian, with Valkyrie, would love to hear more about her. She seems very interesting. I just find it hard to imagine that all of them were like, yeah, no one's really been significant up until this point, until these humans have come here. Like, that's great and all, but I would have loved to have a little bit more of more. No, I would have loved to have a little bit more dynamic relationships instead of just, oh, you're my mate, you're my mate, this is meant to be. Smut does not fix everything. So this book was very, very steamy, but it always seemed like it came when there was an issue, when Cassian was feeling down, when Nesta was feeling down, and then boom, problem solved. And that's great and all, but I was like, so where's the solution? That's just my opinion. I thought it was really weird that all of their problems seemed to be resolved when they were with each other, and no matter if it had to do with the Illyrian war camps or it had to do with Feyre, like everything was just, it was fine. It was fine when they're together. Actually talking about Cassian and Nesta's relationship, I think that it's great that they healed together. Cassian has gone through a lot of the same experiences as Nesta has, and so that was something that I think is really wonderful. But one thing is I wish that they could have been written like their own couple instead of like Face and 2.0. The whole your mind thing, which also, I hate it. The dialogue during the smut, mm -mm. but but it was so reminiscent of Feyre and Resand, and then the whole the bargain thing, and there were a ton of parallels that I just I I didn't enjoy. It. I thought that there was other things that you could have added. We didn't need another Resand and Feyre. They were never going to be another Resand and Feyre. And trying to push them into that, I just think it didn't work too well. This is also a really tiny criticism. I haven't really seen anyone talk about it before, but I personally thought that there were some really jarring, realistic moments that took me out of the fantasy world and put me back into the one, this one, Earth, what I was reading in. For example, the friendship bracelets that Gwen and Emery and Nesta made together, I thought that was really cute, but when they were like describing it, I was like, oh, th those are friendship bracelets. When Cassian's talking about like eating carbs or eating sugar, even even as his gift to Nesta, the, the little lamp that you can like tap to read, like that's a glorified reading lamp. They were all very small moments. It kind of took me out of reading it. One big question that I have is what is Nesta's power? She's already given it away from start to end of the book. It's like gone. But what is it? We get the scene where she's having a nightmare and so Reese comes flying in. Don't know why he's there, but he they ask him what's her power and he just goes, what does that mean? Can she control the dead? No, because she needs the mass to do that. Can she bring back the dead? No, because she couldn't do that when Feyre was dying without giving back her powers. Her powers, which we don't even know what they are. So she can use the trove items, so the mass, the crown, and the harp. She can use those because she is made from the cauldron. Meaning that toward the end, they lock it all up because she's scared that she's going to use them. Meaning that even without her power, she can still use them. So what is her power? What did she take from the cauldron? Yes, there's the silver flames, but that's not death. And all she does with those silver flames, let me just say, is she lets them flash to her eyes and then it scares people away, which, whatever. But yeah, so she gives away her power because she wants to save Feyre's kid, but we never get a clear distinction of what is her power. And it just seemed like such a cop out because I don't think Sarah J Mass knew um, what her power was either. So that was a lot of questioning, but one thing that I can say with absolute certainty that I loved in this book is Nesta's relationship with the house. I thought it was so sweet how Nesta was the only one who was able to bring out the more lively side of the house, and they had that whole sleepover with Gwen and Emery, and that was just really so amazing, and honestly, the house kind of made me cry a little bit. Another fantastic thing is her relationship with Gwen and Emery. Absolutely love the girl power. I love that they were friends outside of the inner circle so we get some more characters. And Nesta just doesn't seem like someone who would go along with Feyre's friends, so I really like that she made her own. All of the training scenes, I love them. Frankly, I liked when she was lusting after Cassian during the training scenes more than the actual smut scenes. They were much more enjoyable for me to read. I just think it was really great how she was able to convince Gwen and Emery to fight, and then they became this whole power unit, the Valkyrie. Quickly jumping to the ribbon cutting thing to Gwen, how she's the first one to cut the ribbon, and then we read Asriel's point of view and he trains her, he coaches her. 
I ship Azrael and Gwen so hard. I originally was a huge stan of Azrael and Elaine. I don't like Elaine. I think, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her. I think she's so boring. I think she's so bland. And I think Azrael deserves so much better. Gwen, on the other hand, is so entertaining. She is so fiery. She has that really great spirit, and I think that's something that Azrael could really do well with. I originally thought, like, maybe the gardener, quiet type would be good for Az, but I don't know. I think I think someone who enjoys the quiet in the library, like Gwen does, but also has a fiery side, I think that could be a better pairing. That's just me. So we've talked about the ribbon-cutting scene. They all pass the test. They become Valkyrie. I loved when they started doing the obstacle courses. They look up, and Lord Devon is there, and Cassian and Azrael say, yeah, you pass the trials to the blood rite. So right immediately then, I was like, hmm, interesting. I feel like this is going to go somewhere. And it does. They're all captured and they're thrown into the blood, right? It got Cassian and Nesta away for a little bit. And honestly, I thought that was the best part of the book when they were away from each other doing their own thing. I thought that was really great. But the thing about the blood, right, that I just find so unrealistic is how did the three of them win? They've been training for what? Three, six, maybe a year, maybe a year at max, but probably more closer around three months. And... These Illyrian warriors are known for being brutal, they're known for being swift, they're known for being strong, literally everything. So how are these three girls supposed to win? I don't know. I love the feminism, I love that Sarah J Mass champions female rights. It just seems to lack a little nuance and I wish that that was something we could have gotten more of. In my opinion, something that I thought would have been really cool to happen, and I kind of thought this is the direction where it was going, is we get this one Illyrian warrior, and I already forgot his name, I'm sorry, um, but he's the one who is very politically motivated, and so he helps Nesta that first night during the blood rite. I think it would be much better if Nesta's final stand, he shows up again, and he fights alongside her. Not to diminish girl power, because I actually don't think by having someone else fight with you, it diminishes anything at all. In fact, I think that it would bring a really good statement that the, there's a new generation of Illyrians who are recognizing females, the Valkyrie, and they're willing to stand by their side. I think that would have been so cool to see, and I'm kind of sad that he just disappeared into nothing. On the related note of Nesta's final stand, I loved and I hated this scene. I loved when she was fighting with Emery's cousin, whose name I also forgot, but I loved when she was fighting with him and he thinks, do you really think that you can take me on? And she says, I do, because my mate trained me well. I was like, yes, we knew that they were mates, but to hearing the acceptance, it was just fantastic. Now, the thing that kind of drew away from that is that I just find it highly unrealistic that one person, Nesta, she has power above all. She can, she can rule the world. Like, I don't like that kind of trope. I don't like when one person is all powerful, can do all of this. To me, it seems a little bit weak. I like teamwork a little bit better. And so when she sent like Gwen and Emery away, I was like, gosh darn it. So that was her final stand. And then we get Cassian who gets taken as prisoner and his mind is wiped and he attacks her. And then we get this kill order and he turns a knife on himself and he kills himself. This scene was so cool. It was so exciting. I loved it. And then the queen pops out. Nesta obliterates her like this. We, we spend like 700 pages building up a plot. This queen is so powerful. How are we gonna deal her? And she shows up right there and Nesta's like, bye-bye. And Nesta's at what, like 25% power, maybe 20%. It just, it was like, okay, we need a plot so that we can insert smut in between. Cassian was only dead for the entirety of like two pages. I read this on an ebook. I don't know in the physical copy how long he was dead for, but a couple lines. And it would have been exciting if he was like hurt or something. So I guess we've kind of descended a little bit more into plot related things. This plot was so weak. It was weaker than Nesta when she tried to hold that plank the first time. So Cassian's musical orb, I thought that was just such a cute little addition and he knows Nesta really well. But that orb leads us to Eris, the highlight of this novel. <clears throat> yes, your honor, um, I am here to defend Eris. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that the number one reason why people hate Eris is because of what he did to Mort. And I don't disagree. That was really terrible. He puts on this cold mask, but the key word there is mask. Everyone's talking about how he's acting, he's cold, and the reason we don't love him is because he's not in the inner circle, or what remains of the inner circle. But we hear all the time all the terrible things that Cassian and Az and Reese have done, and we still love them all the same. I present to you the exact description of the horrible thing that Eris did. <clears throat> her family, they... I'd never seen him at such a loss for words. Reese cleared his throat. When they were done, they dumped her on the autumn court border with a note nailed to her body that said she was Eris's problem. Eris was not the one who tortured more. 
her family was. We've known that. We hate them. They're horrible people. We hate Eris for the fact that he left her on the border of the Supreme Court to die. The note said that it was Eris' problem, and we thought that he was neglecting the problem. But what if that was his solution? Let's look at the facts. We know that Baron, Eris' father, High Lord of the Autumn Court, killed Lucian's lover. We also know that he has tortured Eris. Eris, at the time of leaving Moor there, knew that she had just slept with Cassian. She's Reese's cousin, and Azrael loves her. I don't know if he knew that last part. We knew that part. But by leaving her there at the border of the Spring Court, what are the odds, leaving her there to die, what are the odds that she actually would have died? They would have gone looking for her. They would have found her. If he had brought her back with him, she likely would have faced a lot more wrath from Baron than she ever did. We've also gotten a few illusions over the books in this series that he left Moore there for a very distinct reason. The reason being probably that she would have been harassed at the Autumn Court. And two, he said that he didn't marry her because he knew that's not what she wanted. And so I'm just saying, I have, I'm seeing a lot of potential in Eris. That being said, one of my favorite scenes in this book was the ball that Nesta comes to and she seduces Eris with her dancing, not like that. Anyways, she seduces Eris with her dancing and we see him totally fall in love with her and offer anything for her hand in marriage. At least he has feelings, you know? Like, I think Eris has a lot of potential and um, I think he could be a really awesome character in future books. I rest my case. We end the novel with all three Archeron sisters reunited, which I think is absolutely fantastic. But I think the one thing that was not explicitly stated, but we can really see it, is I think the three Illyrian brothers are kind of like, it's going downhill. Every time that Reese tells Cassian to do something, he doesn't. Like at the ball with Eris, when he steps into the dance, when this is uber important, and Cassian's like, no, I'm jealous, I'm just gonna step in. It's not like the old Cassians, it's just infuriating because he didn't listen to Reese. And Reese does everything because Pharaoh from time to time high ladies it up, which I don't think is a real thing. She seems to have lost all of her fire, and then every once in a while she's like, oh, I'm high lady, you have to listen to me. Didn't like that. But anyways, Reese always takes Pharaoh's side. Cassian always takes Nesta's side, and now we kind of see Azrael starting to always take Elaine's side, which I'm hoping goes toward Gwen, but we'll see. So I really actually think that unless they have some serious bonding, these three brothers, their relationship is going to spiral down. The ending for our two main characters, Cassian and Nesta, it's really sweet and she talks about changing her body for their future child and I was like, that's so cute. You know what I also noticed? She didn't change Elaine's body. So, I don't know if that's foreshadowing that Azrael and Gwen are gonna happen. I'd be really pleased with that. But that about wraps up my thoughts and my rambles about A Court of Silver Flames. I would love to hear your thoughts about it, so please leave a comment, DM me, shout into the void. I'll try my best to respond. Again, I apologize that this video was really chaotic, but if you stuck with me this long, I have a rare picture of Nesta Archeron from summer 2016, back when she didn't really have a personality other than being rude. I think we were going for like a rich city mom in this photo, but it just happens to be Nesta as well. The face is covered because it's not me in this picture, but please peep the, the smut book and the glass of wine because Nesta's low-key an alcoholic in this book. If you're wondering how 13 year olds got their hands on some wine, it is not. It is red and blue food coloring mixed to perfection in water. We were just that committed to the aesthetic. I am just that committed to this channel. So if you like me and you liked my thoughts, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Otherwise, that's fine too. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.